Andragogy, as explored by Rick and Shara Melik, is a concept in adult education with varied regional definitions, but commonly understood in American education as a theory or component within the broader field of adult learning. Merriam emphasizes several interpretations of andragogy, ranging from a subsidiary of pedagogy to an independent discipline or a synonym for adult education. In the U.S., it is most recognized as a theory or aspect of adult education. The development of adult learning theories in the 20th century accentuated three primary approaches, andragogy, self-directed learning, and transformative learning, drawing from eclectic academic theories. Andragogy is the oldest among these, with its roots in Edward C. Lindemann's 1926 work, The Meaning of Adult Education, although the term was first coined by Alexander Kapp in 1833. The concept was significantly developed by Malcolm Knowles, an American educator who defined andragogy as the art and science of helping adults learn. This definition evolved as Knowles continued to refine his ideas, positioning andragogy on a continuum between teacher-directed and self-directed learning. Andragogy contrasts with pedagogy, child-leading, by focusing on man-leading, affirming the unique needs of adult learners. It is rooted in a humanistic approach to education, where the learner's experience, self-direction, and personal growth are central. This approach is illustrated in practice, as seen in the Melik's description of an adult Bible study class, where adults engage in discussions around personal experiences, guided by questions that relate directly to their lives. This setting exemplifies andragogical principles, showcasing an interactive, experience-based, and learner-centered approach to adult education, asserting the importance of relevance, engagement, and personal connection in fostering adult learning. Also, Knowles's model of andragogy is a cornerstone in adult education, distinctly setting it apart from pedagogy or the method and practice of teaching children. It rests on six foundational assumptions about adult learners, highlighting the transition from dependency to self-directedness. As adults mature, they become more autonomous, drawing from a rich reservoir of experiences that serve as a primary resource for learning. Their readiness to learn becomes intertwined with their social roles, shifting focus from future application to immediate use of knowledge. Adults prefer learning to be problem-centered rather than subject-centered. The later additions to Knowles's assumptions indicate the significance of internal motivation over external factors and the necessity for adults to understand why learning is relevant to them. This understanding reflects the adult's need for practical and applicable knowledge, driven by internal desires such as job satisfaction, self-esteem, or quality of life improvements. Knowles's andragogy is not just a set of assumptions, but a framework leading to practical strategies for adult learning. These strategies involve creating an inclusive and comfortable learning environment, recognizing and valuing the learner's experiences, and encouraging active participation and collaboration. The aim is to make learning immediately relevant and applicable, fostering a sense of autonomy and respect for the adult learner. Overall, Knowles's andragogy profoundly impacts the way adult education is approached, maintaining the learner's role in their education, the importance of experience, and the need for learning to be relevant and self-directed. It advocates for a learning environment that is responsive to the unique needs of adults, promoting growth and development through practical, problem-centered learning experiences. Moreover, Rick and Shara Melik provide a critical analysis of andragogy, a framework for adult learning popularized by Malcolm Knowles. Their critique centers on two main points, the ambiguity in its definition and its inadequacy in addressing cultural and contextual differences among adult learners. Firstly, the Meliks discuss the definitional ambiguity of andragogy, pointing out that it's often seen more as a set of assumptions rather than a robust theory. This has led to varied interpretations and inconclusive empirical research, undermining its credibility and effectiveness. Despite these issues, andragogy has undeniably influenced educational practice and spurred new thinking and research in adult learning, marking its significance in educational theory. Secondly, and more critically, the Meliks address the failure of andragogy to account for the diverse sociocultural contexts of learners. They argue that Knowles's andragogical model predominantly focuses on an individualistic, normative view of learners, largely overlooking the varied and complex cultural, economic, and experiential backgrounds that shape learning. 
This oversight is particularly glaring when considering at-risk learners who are marginalized due to factors like ethnicity, socioeconomic status, or physical disabilities. The application of a one-size-fits-all approach in such diverse contexts reveals the limitations of andragogy, suggesting a need for more inclusive and adaptive teaching strategies. The Meleks urge educators to recognize these shortcomings and to employ a more nuanced, culturally responsive approach. They advocate for viewing andragogy as just one of many tools in an educator's repertoire, helpful in certain situations, but not universally applicable. This call for a diversified, sensitive approach reflects a broader educational philosophy that values inclusivity and adaptability, aiming to make learning accessible and relevant to all, regardless of their background. Their critique invites ongoing reflection and revision of adult learning theories to better serve the needs of a diverse and changing population. Furthermore, Rick and Shara Melick address the application of andragogy, the study of adult learning, in the context of Christian education, while recognizing its humanistic origins. They contend that while humanism often denotes a secular philosophy, its emphasis on the value and attitudes of learners can be beneficial in Christian settings, provided it is aligned with Christian values and God's word. The aim is not merely to change behavior, but to foster intrinsic transformation in values and attitudes that reflect Christian living. The Meleks discuss several andragogical principles that can enhance Christian education. Firstly, they note the importance of fostering self-directed learning as both andragogy and Christian education value lifelong learning and personal spiritual growth. This approach moves away from teacher-centered methods to empowering adults to take charge of their learning, reflecting in their personal and spiritual development. Secondly, they reiterate the recognition of adults' experiences and capabilities. In Christian education, this means valuing and incorporating learners' life experiences and wisdom into the learning process, thereby enriching mutual understanding and application of biblical principles. Thirdly, the Meleks repeat the need for a conducive learning environment, one that respects and supports adult learners both physically and psychologically. Such an environment encourages open and respectful discussion, crucial for exploring and understanding complex and sometimes controversial spiritual matters. In addition, they stress the importance of making learning relevant and motivated by real-life applications. For adult Christian learners, seeing the personal relevance of lessons and understanding how they address real-life issues can significantly enhance engagement and application. In integrating andragogy into Christian education, the Meleks advocate for a critical and selective adoption of secular learning theories, ensuring they are compatible with and supportive of biblical teachings and the overarching goals of Christian education. This approach requires continuous adaptation and innovation in teaching methods, all aimed at deeper, more impactful adult learning and spiritual growth. Further, Rick and Shara Melick provide an insightful summary of andragogy, underlining Malcolm Knowles' revolutionary shift in adult education from teacher-directed to student-directed learning. This paradigm shift has been foundational, inspiring a wave of student-based teaching methods tailored to the distinct needs of adult learners fundamentally differentiating adult education from traditional child-centric pedagogy. The Meleks underscore Knowles's role in emphasizing these unique needs, which has not only changed how educators approach teaching adults, but also paved the way for further innovation in adult learning methods. The desire for a more researchable and refined definition of andragogy is a focal point in their summary, pointing to the need for empirical evidence to better understand and validate the effectiveness of andragogical methods. Such clarity would enable more precise studies and potentially bolster the application of adult learning principles across various educational settings. This need reflects a broader academic pursuit to quantify and qualify educational strategies to ensure they are as effective and beneficial as possible. Besides, the Meleks stress the significance of acknowledging cultural and contextual differences among adult learners. Recognizing the diversity in backgrounds, experiences, and perspectives is not just an additive component, but a fundamental aspect of any educational theory, particularly in adult learning, where experiences vastly differ. This inclusivity enhances the relevance and resonance of educational content, thereby improving learning outcomes. In sum, the Meleks recognize that despite criticisms, andragogy remains a cornerstone in the evolution of learning theories and practices, its influence is evident in the continual development of adult education methodologies, 
affirming its role in shaping a more learner-centric, flexible, and inclusive educational landscape. This enduring legacy speaks to the transformative impact of andragogy, not just as a theoretical framework, but as a practical approach to adult learning that continues to inspire innovation and adaptation in the face of changing educational needs. Additionally, Rick and Shara Mellick's work on andragogy provides a comprehensive framework for understanding and implementing effective adult learning strategies. Andragogy, distinct from traditional pedagogy, focuses on the specific needs of adult learners, accentuating their transition from dependent learning to self-directed inquiry. The Mellicks outline several key principles fundamental to adult education. The necessity for adults to shift towards self-directed learning, the importance of a comfortable and safe learning environment, the internal motivation and need for relevance in learning, the value of recognizing and integrating adults' prior experiences into new learning, and the use of problem solving as a primary means to understand and internalize new information. These principles reflect a deep understanding of adult learners' unique characteristics, including their desire for autonomy, capacity for self-reflection, and ability to draw upon a wealth of personal and professional experiences. The Mellicks debate that these characteristics necessitate a learning environment that is not only physically comfortable, but also emotionally supportive, fostering a sense of safety and respect. To help educators implement these principles, the Mellicks provide a self-assessment tool, Exercise 6.4. This reflective exercise allows educators to evaluate their teaching methods across various criteria crucial to adult learning. It includes assessing one's ability to facilitate self-directed learning, create a conducive learning environment, encourage open expression, manage informal learning settings effectively, clearly articulate the relevance of lesson content, and incorporate students' experiences and real-life problems into the learning process. By rating themselves on a scale from poor to terrific, educators can identify areas of strength and opportunities for growth, thereby enhancing their effectiveness in teaching adult learners. This holistic approach not only aligns with the andragogical principles, but also actively engages educators in the continuous process of professional development, ensuring that adult learning is both effective and enriching. Moreover, self-directed learning is an educational approach where individuals take the initiative in diagnosing their learning needs, formulating learning goals, identifying resources for learning, choosing and implementing appropriate learning strategies, and evaluating learning outcomes. This concept has evolved notably since the 1960s, paralleling the development of andragogy by Malcolm Knowles. Notably, Alan Tuff's work on adult learning projects profoundly influenced the understanding of self-directed learning, affirming the adult's desire to take responsibility for their learning journey. The Mellicks assert through a personal narrative involving their third child's journey in music and leadership, demonstrating the profound impact of self-directed learning. Despite initial reluctance, her decision to lead as a field commander in her high school band led to remarkable achievements. This story illustrates the transformative potential inherent in self-directed learning when individuals are motivated and empowered to take control of their learning experiences. Furthermore, the Mellicks discuss the interpretation of self-directed learning from various theoretical perspectives. Humanists see it as an opportunity for individuals to fulfill their innate potential and goodness, while behaviorists focus on the modification of behavior through reinforcement. Constructivists highlight the importance of constructing new understandings and knowledge through active exploration, and critical theorists view it as a means for individuals to engage with and affect change in society. These perspectives indicate that an educator's understanding and promotion of self-directed learning are often colored by their personal biases and experiences, maintaining the need for reflective practice and an openness to diverse educational methodologies. The Mellick's examination of self-directed learning presents it as a dynamic and impactful approach to education, capable of accommodating various individual needs and theoretical frameworks. In addition, self-directed learning, as discussed by Rick and Shara Mellick, referencing Merriam, Caffarella, and Baumgartner, is centered on three primary aims that collectively seek to enhance and transform the educational experiences of adult learners. The first aim is to increase the ability of learners to manage their learning autonomously. This involves a progression towards greater self-reliance and independent decision-making in one's learning journey, a concept supported by Alan Tuff. It points out the significance of personal choice 
and the gradual movement towards independence, reiterating that learners should continually evolve to become more self-directed. The second aim focuses on the integration of transformational learning within self-directed learning. Championed by Jack Mesereau in the 1980s, this aspect connects the development of self-directed learning skills to transformative learning theory. It posits that learning is not just about acquiring knowledge, but also about changing one's perspectives, beliefs, and understanding through critical reflection and discourse. This transformation is deeply personal, yet also incorporates a broader cultural understanding, reflecting a dual focus on self and societal change. The third and most ambitious aim is to promote emancipatory learning and social action as essential components of self-directed learning. Stephen Brookfield repeats the need for learning environments that not only foster individual autonomy, but also facilitate social awareness and action. He disputes for a model of learning where students have total control over the content, process, and evaluation of their learning. This aim addresses the broader implications of self-directed learning, suggesting that it should empower learners to engage with and influence their social context. However, the concept of total student control presents challenges within traditional educational structures, often facing resistance due to the radical shift it represents in educational authority and methodology. Further, Rick and Shara Mellick delve into the nature of self-directed learning, SDL, by discussing various models, particularly focusing on the sequential or linear models among the three main types, sequential, interwoven, and instructional. Sequential models are especially underlined for their step-by-step -step approach to the self-directed learning process. The Mellix reference Tufts 13-step model as a prominent example of the sequential approach. This model is pioneering in detailing a methodical progression for learners to undertake their education independently. It sets out a series of decisions and actions that learners engage with, encompassing the selection of learning content, methods, resources, setting goals, pacing, and evaluating progress. The steps guide learners through initiating learning, managing the learning process, overcoming obstacles, and sustaining motivation. Tufts model is rooted in the belief that adult learners are naturally inclined and motivated to direct their own learning. This assumption underscores the model's emphasis on fostering autonomy and initiative among learners. The approach is designed to empower individuals to take charge of their learning journey, making informed choices and adjustments as needed to achieve personal learning objectives. The significance of Tufts model, as discussed by the Mellix, lies in its structured framework, providing clear guidelines that assist learners in navigating the complexities of self-directed learning. The 13 steps serve as a comprehensive guide, promoting a disciplined yet flexible approach to learning. This method not only encourages learners to be self-reliant and proactive, but also enhances their capacity to learn effectively and adaptively. In essence, Tufts model and the Mellick's discussion of it illuminate the intricate process of self-directed learning, championing a learner-centered approach that is both systematic and adaptable. Besides, interwoven or interactive models of self-directed learning present a multifaceted view of learning that diverges significantly from traditional linear models. These models suggest that learning is not a straightforward path, but rather a complex interplay of various factors, including personal characteristics, contextual opportunities, and cognitive processes. The Mellicks elucidate three distinct models that exemplify this perspective. Firstly, George E. Spears' model prioritizes learner control and recognizes the significance of both residual and acquired knowledge. It acknowledges the variety of actions a learner might undertake, from directed to exploratory and even fortuitous actions within different environmental contexts. This model illustrates how the learner's past experiences and the immediate learning environment dynamically influence the learning process. The second model, the Personal Responsibility Orientation, Perot model by Brockett and Heemstra, accentuates the importance of personal responsibility and the broader social context in self-directed learning. It differentiates between self-directed learning as a method and as a personality trait suggesting that effective self-directed learning involves a blend of both internal motivation and external instructional processes. The model affirms the need for learners to recognize and harness their internal motivational drivers in conjunction with navigating the external learning environment. Additionally, Garrison's model integrates control, cognitive responsibility, 
and motivation into the learning process. It asserts the need for personal learning responsibility while acknowledging the value of collaboration in constructing knowledge. Garrison's approach to self-directed learning focuses on self-management and self-monitoring, advocating for a balance between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation to sustain the learning journey. In essence, these interwoven models provide a holistic view of self-directed learning, recognizing it as a dynamic and complex interplay of internal and external factors. They collectively highlight the importance of learner autonomy, the influence of past experiences, and the role of the social and environmental context in shaping the learning experience. Each model contributes to a deeper understanding of how individuals navigate and control their learning paths in various settings. Also, the instructional models of self-directed learning, specifically Gerald Groh's model, provide a framework for understanding and facilitating the transition from teacher-led to learner-led education. Groh's stage self-directed learning model outlines a progression through four distinct stages, each requiring different instructional approaches to support the learner's development and growing autonomy. In the initial stage, students are dependent on the teacher, who acts as an authority or coach. The teaching methods are directive, including lectures, drills, and immediate feedback, aimed at overcoming deficiencies and resistance. As the student progresses to the second stage and shows interest, the teacher transitions to being a motivator or guide, using inspiring lectures and guided discussions. The focus shifts to setting goals and developing learning strategies, fostering a more engaged and proactive attitude in students. The third stage sees the student becoming actively involved, with the teacher adopting the role of a facilitator. Here, the teacher encourages deeper engagement through facilitated discussions, seminars, and group projects, treating students as equals and encouraging collaborative learning. Finally, in the fourth stage, the student becomes self-directed, taking charge of their learning journey. The teacher acts as a consultant or delegator, providing guidance and resources as needed, but allowing the student the freedom to explore, make decisions, and learn independently. Grow's model indicates a gradual release of responsibility from teacher to student, reflecting the natural development of learners as they gain confidence and competence. It provides educators with a structured approach to nurturing self-directed learners, adapting teaching strategies to match the learner's developmental stages, and effectively promoting lifelong learning and autonomy. Moreover, Rick and Shara Melick provide a critical analysis of self-directed learning and andragogy, two prevalent theories in adult education, maintaining the importance of recognizing and addressing the diverse cultural backgrounds of learners. They point out that while these approaches have been celebrated for fostering independence and autonomy, they predominantly reflect white Western values, which may not resonate with or be effective for learners from varied cultural and educational backgrounds. This critique reiterates a significant oversight in adult education, the assumption that all adults will benefit from a uniform approach to learning that values self-direction and autonomy. The Meleks argue that the effectiveness of self-directed learning and andragogy is limited when applied to a heterogeneous group of learners who bring different cultural experiences and expectations to the educational environment. For instance, in some cultures, collaborative and community-oriented learning styles are more valued than individualistic, self-directed approaches. Therefore, educators need to be more adaptable and sensitive to the cultural context of their learners to provide a more inclusive and effective educational experience. Despite their critique, the Meleks acknowledge the research-validated success of self-directed learning and andragogy for many learners. They suggest that these theories should not be dismissed outright, but rather should be one of many tools in an educator's repertoire, particularly in biblical education. By integrating self-directed learning strategies with other pedagogical approaches, educators can create a more flexible and responsive educational environment that caters to the diverse needs of all learners. The Meleks advocate for a more nuanced and culturally sensitive approach to adult education, repeating the need for educators to be aware of the limitations of self-directed learning and andragogy, and to strive for a more inclusive and adaptable teaching methodology. Furthermore, the Meleks dive into the integration of self-directed learning principles within a Christian educational framework, underlining the need to adapt these principles to the unique spiritual context of Christian belief. Central to their argument, 
is the idea that the appreciation and implementation of self-directed learning vary significantly depending on one's theological and theoretical perspectives. In Christian doctrine, the human condition is understood as inherently sinful, necessitating redemption through Christ's sacrifice. Post-conversion, the Holy Spirit acts as the internal motivator, guiding believers towards spiritual maturity. This internal motivation is crucial for genuine growth in Christlikeness, contrasting with external motivators like peer pressure or behavioral conformity often seen in church settings. The authors critique such external behavioristic approaches, suggesting that they may stunt spiritual growth rather than nurture it. The text proposes that Christian growth is inherently dynamic and cyclical, fueled by an understanding and experience of God's love. This cycle involves growing in knowledge of God, obeying His directives, and experiencing more of His love, which in turn motivates further learning and obedience. This process is not just about individual growth, but also about impacting others, as the growing believer is envisioned to engage and transform the world around them with the love of God. For the Christian educator, the Melek suggests incorporating self-directed learning through various models that include linear planning of scripture study, fostering personal responsibility in learners, and facilitating an environment that recognizes and follows the Holy Spirit's guidance. Educators are to transition from being directive to supportive, mirroring the spiritual journey of a believer from dependence to mature self-directed faith. This educational approach aims to create learners who are not only knowledgeable in scripture, but are also spiritually mature and capable of self-directed growth and learning in their faith journey. Last but not least, Self-directed learning is a pivotal concept within adult educational theory, underscoring the importance of individuals taking charge of their educational paths for the sake of lifelong learning. Arising in tandem with andragogy, SDL has cultivated an enduring following among educators and learners, despite a noted decline in research interest. This decline, as revealed through Ralph Brockett's review of self-directed learning literature from 1980 to 1998, has not detracted from SDL's profound and lasting changes in the realm of adult education. While the fervor for SDL research has ebbed, the torch has been passed to the concept of transformative learning, which has seen a rise in prominence. Implementing SDL requires employing strategies that place the learner at the center of their educational experience. Educators are encouraged to take proactive steps to create opportunities for SDL, such as offering students choices in both the subject matter they wish to learn and the methods by which they wish to learn it. This involves providing learners with access to diverse resources and fostering an adult-friendly learning environment that prioritizes personal responsibility. It is also important for educators to help learners identify what internally motivates them and to understand how their character traits impact their learning process. In addition, matching students' needs with the right learning opportunities and providing a social context that is both stimulating and safe are essential parts of the SDL approach. One of the fundamental goals is to gradually shift the focus from teacher-led instruction to one where the learner gains autonomy, and this requires the educators to diminish their role as the learner's self-direction grows. To effectively gauge the application of SDL methods, the educators can undertake a self-assessment exercise, which allows them to rate their own performance across various SDL-related teaching practices. These include fostering student choice, adapting spiritual teachings to individual circumstances, supporting personal relationships with students, and encouraging learners to take responsibility for their learning. Importantly, educators must ensure that SDL does not substitute for thorough lesson preparation. It should complement a well-structured curriculum. By reflecting on these elements, educators can gauge their progress in moving from a teacher-directed model to one that is truly learner-directed, thereby reinforcing the principles of SDL and contributing to the ultimate goal of lifelong learning. In conclusion, Rick and Shara Melick dig into andragogy, an educational theory focused on adult learning distinctly different from pedagogy, which targets children. They gravitate toward Malcolm Knowles' interpretation of andragogy, viewing it as an approach that values the learner's experiences, encourages self-direction, and pursues practical, problem-centered learning. The Meleks emphasize the need for instructional methods tailored to adult learners' distinct characteristics, which demand greater autonomy and immediate applicability of knowledge. Further, despite recognizing the value and influence of andragogy on adult education, the Meleks critique the theory for its vague definitions and potential disconnect 
with the cultural and contextual realities of diverse learners. They contend that the assumptions of andragogy predominantly reflect Western values and may not universally apply to all adult learners. Given these limitations, they accentuate the need for educators to weave various pedagogical methods, including andragogy, into their practices, ensuring they cater to the broad spectrum of cultural backgrounds in adult education. Besides, the Meliks also reflect on the application of andragogy within Christian education, where the principles can be nuanced to align with Christian tenets. In this setting, andragogy aims not just to impart knowledge, but to inspire intrinsic transformation adhering to Christian values and principles. The goal is to engage with adult learners in a way that their learning path contributes to their spiritual growth, enhancement of their personal and communal faith, and the ability to apply teachings to real-life scenarios. Additionally, self-directed learning is closely examined, with Tuft's linear model discussed as a key methodology for adults assuming control over their education. Gerald Groh's instructional model is cited as a practical guide for educators to support adult learners' evolving self-direction and independence. Lastly, despite reduced research interest in SDL compared with transformative learning, the Meliks stress its lasting significance in adult education. They advocate for learning environments that promote personal responsibility, match educational experiences to learner motivations, and adapt teaching to cultural and individual contexts. Educators are encouraged to self-assess their use of SDL strategies, ensuring a balance between directing education and empowering learners, thus fostering an enduring culture of lifelong learning.